Greta Thunberg calls out China for their carbon emissions. China responds by fat shaming. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. I know you remember Greta Thunberg, the teenage activist who spoke at the UN Action Climate Summit back in 2019. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Whether or not you like her, there's no doubt she's become one of the most influential people of her generation. She's the youngest ever Time Magazine Person of the Year. But in her several years of climate activism, she's never talked publicly about the world's biggest carbon emitter, China. That is, until last month, when she tweeted a link to a CNN article and wrote this. Yes, China is still categorized as a developing nation by WTO. They manufacture a lot of our products and so on. But that's, of course, no excuse for ruining future and present living conditions. We can't solve the climate crisis unless China drastically changes course. She has a point. China emits 27% of the world's greenhouse gases, according to this 2019 chart by the Rhodium Group. That's more than all developed nations combined. So, after years of climate activism, the entirety of her criticism of China is one tweet, rehashing a CNN article. But the Chinese Communist Party is very sensitive, which is how you know they're strong and confident. Even that one tweet was enough to make my favorite Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, move to attack her by framing China as unfairly bullied by the Western world. They called Greta out on her silence over Japan's dumping of radioactive water, proposing that if Thunberg lashed out at Japan's move, it will not be consistent with Western mainstream political posture. Therefore, to cater to them, Thunberg has remained silent in a bid to protect her own interests. Yeah, how dare she not point out Japan's dumping of radioactive water? Except for that time she did. And that other time she did. But maybe Chinese state-run media didn't see those tweets, because Twitter is banned in China. Although that doesn't seem to stop the Global Times from having its own Twitter account. But enough about Chinese state-run media's hypocrisy. This is about Greta Thunberg's hypocrisy. The point is, she's a double-standard environmentalist and a puppet of Western politicians. You know, the ones she routinely criticizes. A few hours after that article, the Global Times doubled down with another one that denies China's carbon emissions and belittles Thunberg's understanding of climate change. Thunberg, who at age 15 started skipping school on Fridays for her climate protests, is merely 18 years old this year. She is short of sufficient academic knowledge study and lack of sound self-judgment capability. Girl like her is prone to be affected or even manipulated by some political forces. Academic knowledge study. Girl like her is prone to be affected. Sounds like the translator also skipped school on Fridays. And other Chinese state-run media joined in on the group criticism. China Daily called Greta Thunberg a Swedish environmentalist princess who should reduce her own carbon emissions. Wait a minute. Is that a fart joke? The princess had never planted a tree or planted a piece of grass in the desert. Instead, she ran around. She held a lot of protesting cards, which polluted the environment. Yeah, unlike China, which has planted 20 million trees in Xinjiang. Yes, the Communist Party is planting trees in an area with almost no water, attempting to transform a desert into a forest. See? China is a leader in climate change. But China Daily continued to attack Greta Thunberg. They posted this unflattering photo of her saying, although she claims to be vegan, 
judging from how she looks, her carbon emissions are not so low herself. Oh, okay, it's not a fart joke, it's a fat joke. Stay classy, Chinese state-run media. This is a common tactic for the Chinese regime. When they have trouble defending themselves over what someone says, they go on the offensive and launch personal attacks on whoever said the thing they're mad about. This is called poisoning the well. Here's another example. When female victims of Uyghur genocide spoke out about rape used as a form of torture in Xinjiang, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wan Wenbin didn't try to prove their claims were false. Instead, he held up their photos and called them liars. He said one was morally depraved and of inferior character, and accused another of adultery. Here's another example of poisoning the well. During Taiwan's 2016 presidential elections, Chinese officials did whatever they could to criticize Democratic Progressive Party candidate Tsai Ing-wen. But instead of pointing out flaws in her policy, they claimed Tsai was incapable of leading because she's an unmarried woman with no emotional burdens of love, family constraints, and no children's concerns. So it's no surprise that China's response to Greta Thunberg criticizing China's carbon emissions was to fat shame her. Unfortunately, when you fat shame someone, it often backfires. Greta Thunberg just owned it. Being fat shamed by Chinese state-owned media is a pretty weird experience even by my standards, but it's definitely going on my resume. And thanks to criticism from Chinese state-run media, Greta Thunberg got a lot more attention than she would have from just her one original China tweet. Even people who don't really like her are now defending her from attacks by the powerful machinery of an authoritarian state. And this just makes her even more influential. To which I say, I've been criticizing the Chinese Communist Party for eight years. Where's my Hulu documentary? Where's my three-part PBS series? Where's my life-size bronze statue at a third-tier British university? Look, I'm not jealous, I just don't like hypocrisy. And now it's time for me to answer a question from you, my amazing viewers who support China Uncensored through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Travis Friesen asks, with China being a near-Arctic nation, do you think it will stake out claims in the Arctic in the same way it tries to claim the entirety of the South China Sea? Yes, Travis. Yes, they will. And I can predict this with confidence because it's already been happening. China might not be able to claim the Arctic has been part of China since ancient times, at least until they find a giant panda frozen in an iceberg. But they've been trying to insert themselves into Arctic decision-making despite not being one of the eight countries that borders the Arctic. In 2013, China joined the Arctic Council as an observer. Five years later, China declared itself a near-Arctic state. And soon, China will claim it has a right to make decisions in the region because so many Chinese ships go through the Arctic, now more than ever since the polar ice caps are melting, thanks to climate change, which China is totally not contributing to. So shut up, Greta! Thanks for your question, Travis. Be like Travis and join us on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Contribute a dollar or more per episode and you'll get cool perks like the chance to have me answer your question on the show. The link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.